What's up? Welcome back to Opposites of Track Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, and I'm sitting here next to two amazing gentlemen. But first, I'm going to introduce my husband, or allow you to introduce yourself. <laughs> Miguel Ramirez. <laughs> What's up, everybody? And we have a special guest with us today. Yes. Yeah. Hello out there, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. The soul brother. It's Barry White. You're on the soul train. <laughs> What's going on? So, my yeah. really good friend, Paul. Hey, everybody. Yes. Paul yes. Gebhardt. How y'all doing? And we are going to have a whole lot of fun today. A whole lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into anything, let's go ahead and, you know, do our do plugs, our plugs. And all, right. all that so good as, stuff. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Trust Inc. And that's trustinkusa.com. And yes. Trust Inc. is? We are a mobile notary agency. We are nationwide. We do a lot of work with title companies, law firms, and individuals as well. We are also, we are also yeah. <laughs> independent associates with uh, Legal Shield. And what Legal Shield does is it gives you access to attorneys to the palm of your hand. Awesome. And uh, the way this podcast grows is the way it grows the best is by sharing it. And you can find the podcast at oppositesattractpod.com. And you can see all the links at the top. If you want to uh, buy things on Amazon and support the show, you can click on the support the show tab at the top and it'll take you to our Amazon affiliate link. So whenever you buy anything, it'll help support the yes. show. And it costs you absolutely nothing. That's mm. right. So, and uh, you can cool. find the podcast there. on YouTube. And yes. all the other podcast apps. Yeah. So. so, Paul, I've been talking about you for quite some time. Yeah. Which, you know? Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have heard my story yes. on how we met. So, how do we meet, Paul? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this is where I get, like, serious. Um, I'm a big believer that nothing happens by coincidence. Yes. Um, I believe in God. It's yes. my whole life. Um, and one day I'm sitting in my office and I'm and listening to some racket out in the front in the lobby. I'm like, what is going on? There's a couple of hens or something out there just going crazy, right? And sure enough, I, I come think I hear front. one now. What? I, I think I hear one now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you. You know that. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, look. <laughs> so I come out front and there's Sonia and what was your associate's name? Carrie. Time? Kara, Kara, yeah, Kara, Kara right? Yes, yes. And you guys were talking and laughing yeah. with Kylie, my assistant, and just about different things and yes. her spirituality or her center and soul and yes. how warm she was. Right? Yes. You ever conversation? Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I'm just kind of eavesdropping, getting into the conversation, and then you leave. You yeah. guys take off. Yeah. I'm well, like, hey, nice to meet yeah. you. Take care. So Paul owns an American family agency. American yeah. Family <laughs> Insurance. <laughs> yeah. Dang, that. you get the whole commercial and everything. What? <laughs> and uh, we were actually pulling doors for Legal Show that day. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah. That's what you were doing. Yeah. Pulling doors. Yeah. I was trying to sell you a plan. Trying to sell a plan. You and your employees. <laughs> and then we got the bonus plan out of the whole deal. And here totally. we go. Totally. So, so, so how, yeah, long, how long ago was that? <clears throat> Man, that's been over maybe, a year, about a year and a half, maybe. Yeah, right? about okay, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this is my first time actually meeting Paul. Yeah, so I've right. heard a lot about you. I mean, what over like the last year or yeah. something yes. like that? Yes, likewise, yeah. likewise. So, what happened? So, I ended up leaving my phone. Yes, so I, I'm walking back into my office. I noticed on the counter, I'm like, hey, she left her phone. One of the girls left the phone. You know, oh, I got to try to track her down, but you've been gone for a while. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like running one down one side of the, the plaza. And I'm running back down the other side. It's hot outside, too, by the way. <laughs> it's so, hot. You know, but I know what it's like to lose a phone, you yeah. know? So I'm like, I got to find these guys. got to find these guys. I'm like, you know what? I know what they want. Went around the corner. You guys were coming back, heading back. And you had just said, oh, I knew I had left my phone somewhere, but I didn't know where. And so I gave you the phone, and yeah. that's when we knew right there. It was a spirituality type of thing. I mean, bottom line. Yes. Because what you said and what I said in that moment, it's like, look, we're all going to get together. We're going to talk about some things. And at this point, I'll turn it over to you because you were going through some specific things yes. in your own life, spiritually yes. speaking, right? Yes. You want to share those? So Paul and I, we hit it off immediately. And I called you back, and I think I was setting up a legal shield meeting to meet with you. Yep. And boy, did that go totally just different. unplanned, different, yeah. of course, you know, and we were having, I think, a three hour conversation that day. Right. 
And that time I felt that you and I were going, we were growing separate. Like I felt like, you know, some things were going on. I felt like I was going through a spiritual warfare. Um, You know, I was questioning and Paul and I, I mean, he got me and I love the way like you, you're a Christian man, Mm -hmm. but the way you see things, Mm. the way you see things Mm. allowed me to continue in my faith, but you also helped me to grow with my marriage. Don't make me cry. <laughs> no, but, but seriously. He's like me. So, so you're going to have two don't, babies don't, on this don't, podcast. Don't make me cry. But, okay, but see, so I cry of, all the time on here. Oh, I like <laughs> But that. usually it's making fun of There's her. There's a lot to be said for a man who cries, man. you got to be in touch with all yeah. of you, right? Yeah. That's right. So especially if you want to give love to a woman, right? Yeah. you got to be all of you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's one of my things for men out there. It's like, look, all these things that you hide because you think you're hard or tough or you've been taught this, right, or that, in the end, a woman just wants all of you. That's the good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the sad, all of it. And so don't be afraid to express who you are and what you're going through. It's an important exactly. thing in a yeah. relationship. Yeah. So first of all, i got to back up because you mentioned, and you know how I am about this. I believe in humility. Mm-hmm. I'm a big believer in it. Yeah. So nothing good is Paul. Paul's the jackass, right? The good in me is God. That's it. The Lord himself, his word, living that word, loving people as he loves me, unconditionally accepting them and helping them through life. Yeah. So when you run across somebody who obviously is in peril, they're having some problems in their life, but you know love is there, what kind of human being ignores it and says, you know what, that's not my problem? Yeah. What kind of human being does that? So I knew how much love she had for you, and I knew exactly where she was. And I said, honey, listen, you're in a situation right now that truly being with them, expressing your heart, and most importantly, prayer. Working closer on yourself, understanding where you are, and just loving by example, because that's the biggest problem. Everybody thinks love is these fancy words and these Hallmark Mm -hmm. cards. Love is an action. Yep. Love is an action. Love is what you do for somebody when nobody else will do it. Because you know what? Nobody wants to do it. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that the truth? Yep. Yeah. That's so true. that's what it is. That's what love's all about. And that's what you have to be. So somebody once asked me, what does it take to have a happily, happy marriage? I said, you know, honestly, it's simple. It's really simple. Well, no way. I've heard that marriages are like hard work, Paul. That's a, no way. I said, well, yeah, it is. First of all, you got to be honest. Mm-hmm. You have to truly love the other person. And when you love them, you think of them first. It's two people trying to outgive each other. Yeah. There is no take in love. So if you've heard this baloney out there, oh, it's a give and a take. That's a bunch of baloney. Yeah. It's a give. Mm. When you give and you give and you give unconditionally to one another and you are the center of your universe, nobody can interfere from the outside. What yeah. you got is so powerful, it can't be penetrated. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how that whole, ha- whole thing happened, right? Yes. And he made me realize that I was a selfish, bi- selfish bitch. Like, he made me realize. How, how was that? Because <laughs> we were talking, and I was talking to him about how it was all about, like, me, the way I was feeling. It was all I, I, I. And that's when he's... You know, um, and I started talking to him about, you know, like the things you do and, but it was all about me. Like it was all about my feelings. It's, it was all about, you know, it was all about me. Right. So that's the first warning sign, right? The me syndrome, I call it. And when you start saying I and me and I and me, well, then you're going to be loving I and me and I and me, meaning you're going to end up alone. Two people tend to, and it's natural, it's natural to express when you love someone and you're desperate and you don't know what to do, you only speak about what you're going through. And I understood that. But what I wanted her to really understand is you got to get to the point of finding out this is how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that way? And most importantly, find out how Miguel Mm -hmm. feels. What's Miguel going through? Right. Yeah. What is it? Because typically... When you're dealing with that, it's a byproduct of somebody maybe closing down because they're stressed about money or job 
or whatever it is. Yeah, having lot, empathy. Right, yeah. empathy, right, Miguel? Because us guys, we tend to, you know, we try to internalize a lot yeah. of that stuff. And to a woman, it feels like we've pulled away, when in reality, we're trying to work things out. Right. Was right. that around the same time that we got that book? Um, yes, The Five, five Love five Languages. Love languages. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then I started reading the Bible. Um, he, You would give me work, homework. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I was talking to him about our different beliefs, and I yeah. felt that that's what was going on. Like, my spirituality and my belief was enhancing tremendously. And I felt, and I knew where you, I know At where you are with your getting, belief. And yeah. the more I went towards God, the more you went the opposite direction from me. You know? No, I'm talking no, about I, like... I don't know if I've gone in the opposite direction Not from the you. opposite. I mean, but, our views may... Yes. But not in an opposite direction from you. Well, I felt it though. Yeah. I felt it, you know? And so... And I went to you, and we started talking about that as well, like the different beliefs. And you told me, you just got to love him. Right. <laughs> you just got to love him. Right. You got to do for him. Right. You have to love him. Do for him. How do you show or teach anybody anything? Is By it, doing. Yeah. Is yeah. it constantly preaching to them or beating a table and telling them all they're doing wrong? Or isn't it loving by example? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it being there, holding them, doing something for them, thinking about where they're at, and let them understand that this is the byproduct of love. The byproduct of love is the action, is being there. Mm-hmm. You, there's no substitute for that. You yeah. cannot substitute being there. One of the big reasons relationships fail, besides communication, right? Besides mm-hmm. trust, we all know those are important. Right. Yes. A lot of people just aren't there. Let's be honest with ourselves. You're sitting on that end of the couch, and she's sitting on that end of the couch, and you're both on Facebook. And you ain't spoke for two hours, but you don't realize it's been two hours. Yeah. So you're with everybody but each other. So it's like kids. People wonder, how kids, how come some kids turn out so great and some kids, you know, they're just always in trouble? Yeah. Well, you just got lucky or it's genetic or, first of all, science is overrated. It's true. It's important. It's just another language of God. Everything belongs to God. And the bottom line is this. When it comes down to it, you have to understand the importance of explanation, communication, trust. But being there, parents that are there with their children, even if you don't know what to do, do something stupid. Be a kid. One yeah. of my yeah. favorite scriptures is just, be ye as little children. Yes. Every day, we should all be the same way. What makes yeah. us excited to live each day? We're worried about yesterday, something that went bad or wrong. Or we're trying to think ahead to tomorrow when you have no flipping idea what's going to happen tomorrow. None. Mm -hmm. And anybody who says they do, they're a liar. Yeah. You know, people out there selling self-help books. Yeah. They're self-helping, all right. They're self-helping themselves to your wallet. That's what they're (laughs) (laughs) self-helping. The the truth of the matter is you can pick up the Bible. and Listen, and I don't care. This is for everybody. Love is for everybody. That's, you know, one of my, another one of my, I'm sorry, guys, I, I didn't get all, all spiritual with you this morning, I love but it just kind of goes that way. You it's know? Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's Sunday. That's right. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. What a brother. So, in, in reality, you know, um, man, I know I was going with that trade of thought, so maybe I'll start. Oh, it's going to be that. good, too. But it, You're right. <laughs> oh, and another one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, right? Uh, it says, to be still and know that I am God. Hmm. See, how many times you go through things in your life, right? You feel confused. You don't know what to do. You're stressed out. You ever notice you usually act out in desperation, and that's when you screw up. Yes. You've told, yep. oh, man, I really screwed it up. Mm-hmm. Now, you screwed it up because you got desperate. Yeah. You yeah. did something because you, th- you thought you had to. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I remember, you know, like you had told me, I showed you my calendar, and you said, Cancel your day. You said, yeah. I need you to cancel everything on that schedule, and I need you to go home with your husband, and I need you to spend time with him. Yep. Be there. Yep. This and that's what I did. And, and listen, when you get confused, when you don't know, you ever notice the wind in the trees, you know? A certain rhythm to the trees, when you really just watch the tree blow in the wind, or when you go in a garden... And you're real quiet and you try to listen closely to everything going on. You know one thing that doesn't happen? What's that? You don't feel stress. Yeah. 
You don't. Miraculously, that stuff kind of starts going away. And that's what it means by be still. You just have to be still. Quiet yourself down a little bit. Live in the moment. Get whatever it is maybe out of your mind at the moment. Come back to it. Yeah, it's like a form of meditation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Prayer or meditation. I was, I was just uh, thinking about this earlier in the week. Like surfing is one of those mm. things for some people because when I lived in Florida, I used to surf. But when you're on the board in the water, you're not really thinking about anything, anything <laughs> at all. Like all, the only thing you're thinking about is the waves that are coming. But that, I mean, at least it was for me. Right. And another thing that's like that is uh, for me is jujitsu. Because you can't think of anything. Mm. The only thing you're thinking about is what you're doing at that moment. Like, I can't think about what happened at work. I can't think about what's going on with the kids. It's just an hour of focusing on what you're doing without anything else. And you feel kind of a power, don't you? You yeah. ever notice when you're in that moment? You yeah. just kind of feel like whole. Yep. Right? So that's a beautiful testimony right there, Miguel. You just, that's the point. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where it is, but it's funny how most of it, comes from nature yeah well is mm. that a coincidence i don't know but could it go back to the garden of eden where god used to come hang out with adam and eve it's good at possibly so what i'm trying to say here is look i'm not selling religion i'm not a big believer in religion i call religion the politics of spirituality and i don't need mankind to make a relationship with god with right. my creator right and what does God look like? I don't know, but he's got to be beautiful because everything in this world is beautiful. Your yeah. marriage is beautiful. Your home, beautiful. <laughs> everything going on in our lives. That's how we look at these things and what we do. Appreciate the things that you have and what is good. Why are you so concerned about what you don't have? Right? Mm -hmm. That's just envy. Why are you envious of what somebody else has? Start being mm -hmm. thankful for what you got first and just see where it goes from there. Right. Yeah. So how long have you been married, Paul? Oh, we've been married 16 years. I've been together with my wife 23 years. That's an interesting story. Ask me about my wife. Now you definitely probably going to get me to cry. <laughs> um, you know, my wife saved my life. She, bottom line, she, I, I'm a big, firm believer, nobody can change it, that God sent her into my life to put over my bullshit. Oops, sorry. Oh, no, that's good. A, oh it's, trust me, you're fine. But, but seriously. <laughs> Some of the stuff we've talked about. We're being here, good right now. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously. I mean, seriously. So let me t let me give you a little story, and I'm going to put this out there. She'll, she'll laugh because she's so cool. Um, man, I look, you're talking to a guy who was a former male stripper, okay? I did modeling. I knew it. I sung. I knew, no, I'm just when kidding. He, when he sang us a song I used to sing <laughs> back in the day. It, you know, it was, listen, in all this kind of, all these natural gifts that I had, uh, I wasn't doing good stuff with them. Mm. Yeah. I was using women. Mm. I was. <clears throat> and I found out basically what it really was. My mother died on my 15th birthday. Mm. She was the closest thing in, your, in my world. And which for the record, so everybody knows, nobody loves you like your mama. Ever. Mm. So you treat your yeah. mama right. Your mama sacrificed a lot for your ass. You better be treating her right. You have right. no idea what she went through for you. Mm. Period. Especially in this day and age. Yeah. So anyway, lost my mother and, you know, I lost my compass. I lost everything. No, nope, because I didn't know. I was 15 years old. Can you imagine what happens mm. to a 15 year old? Oh. oh, which, by the way, white kid in an all black neighborhood. I was born and raised in the ghetto. Where, where are you from? Or East, St. East St. Louis, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. With Jackie Joyner Kersey's from and Kellen Winslow and a lot of athletes come out of there. But yeah, I mean, you know, that was back in the 70s during segregation where, you know, they were busing um, black kids into the white schools and the white kids were just treating them bad and they would come home and guess who they'd take it out on? Mm. Yeah. Me. But you know what's funny? Guess who came to the rescue too? Who's that? Those same black kids. Yeah. Some of them stood up for me in the midst. One time I was getting knifed in the scar here. And my, one of my best friends, Malcolm Hill, out of nowhere, man, he just stood against the whole crowd. White guy? He, black guy. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm you. Not. Look at you. So, so, okay, so why am I bringing that up? Because this all matters. Your wife. You're, yeah, you're talking you about how want, she saved your life. I know, but I get off a lot. But <laughs> it's all, it's all That's why we get along so good. Could you tell, yes. like, we yeah, will be talking for hours because we see something shiny. Right. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. 
It totally happens. But we but we follow each other's conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. So, you know? so get back to my wife, and then I'll come back to that issue of separatism, because that's a yeah. big thing I want to hey, talk about today. We're going to have to have a part two with you, because okay. there's yeah. so much to talk about with you. So with my amazing wife, Nicole, hi, baby. Um, <laughs> you know, she wished me good luck, sent me little smoochy, Aww. kitschy faces when I came today. Um, but I, I was in a bad place, you know, so I met her singing at a place called The Vine. No. Down okay. on the ASU campus, right? And there's a guy named Stu who used to run a karaoke show there called Kamikaze Karaoke. And all the uh, college kids from ASU would get up on the tables and dance. So I was known as the George Michael guy. Mm-hmm. So I would come in and do some George Michael. These kids went crazy, right? So my wife at the time, Nicole, she's there in the background. And she's like, hey, who's that guy? You know? And here's me. Uh I, g- I gave her friend my business card because <laughs> I was so shy. She was so beautiful, so out of my league. I didn't want to just go say anything to her, you know? So I'm like, ooh, think quick, think quick. Here's that desperation thing. So yeah. I gave somebody a card to give it to her. So long story short, she was, she was, she kept That's it. That's awesome. 25 years. Yeah. So, and we dated for seven. And in those yeah. seven years, there was, a, there was a moment when I tried to get rid of her. I was running around on her at the time. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I tried to get rid of her because I I feeling guilty. And I said, you know, God, what do I got to do to get rid of you? I mean, you're like the gum on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> right? I mean, that's <laughs> terrible. Who says something like that? Yeah. Right? And you know what? She just stayed through things with me. And she said something to me because I didn't know that she knew. But we were in the Bahamas when I proposed to her. It finally took me like five years to propose to her. And I said, listen, I, I waited. I've been working on myself a lot. And... And let me tell you something. I couldn't ask you to marry me till I confessed and told you that I was running around when we were first dating. Mm. And you know what she said? Hmm. I know. She yeah. said, but I knew that wasn't you. Mm. I knew there was a better Paul in there. I know mm. who you are. Hmm. This isn't who you are. This this what you're dealing with is pain. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, so what would the word tell what would the world tell her to do? What would most people say? To leave. Right. Yeah. You bet. Done. That's so easy to do, right? But here's, here's, go ahead, Miguel. You no, that, say something. Well, like the, when it comes to marriage nowadays, like that's something that we, we've talked to people about. Like, it's so common for people to just leave. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. When back in the day, you had to, it, it was just seen in, in the public that you had to work things out. You don't just get divorced or married and then divorced. But nowadays, it's just like, any little hiccup or what? You know what? I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I'm mm-hmm. out. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. There's that desperation move again, right? Yeah. So that's where you just got to be still and know. Uh, so, yeah. So to wrap that section, that part up, she just hung in there and she just believed in me and she made me want to be mm. a better man. Yes. Yeah. That's what it was. That's what love does. Yes. Love convicts you naturally. Yes. Because you know, like, wait. Finally, here's this woman who loves me unconditionally like my mom. And that was like 20 years prior. I hadn't had a woman since. And here's this woman who wants to love me for me. Mm. Everything that I am, she's accepting. And that made me go, wow, you know what? I got something real here. I got, I got to do better. I can do better. And so I'm happy to say, what, another, let's see, 23 years altogether? 16 yeah, years of marriage. Nice. Two beautiful kids, amazing career. Yeah. Everything I have, I owe to God and her. Yeah. I mean, honestly, has she not come in my life? I don't know where I'd be right now. Right? I yeah. mean, I could yeah. be somewhere with AIDS or HIV or who knows. I mean, I could, who knows where we'd be yeah. um, if my current lifestyle was going to continue that way. Right. You know? So, yeah, love saved me. So, so here's my, so people say, okay, Paul, you know, the God thing. I don't believe in God. Come on. Yeah, you do. You just don't realize it yet. Because if you believe in love, you believe in God. God. There isn't a difference. (gasps) Think about all the things that have to happen in this world for us to be here today. Yeah. Think about the miracle of the sun, you know? Think about the origins of life, right? So, bottom line is, love is very real. If you don't believe it, think about this. I tell you, even in my friends that are atheists, I'm like, okay. So, you don't believe in God. Well, I don't believe in anything I can't see, Paul. I can't believe anything that can't be proven. I challenge you on that. That's not true. Do you have any children? Well, yeah. You love your kids? Well, yeah. 
Well, how do you know? How do you know? Yeah. I'll do anything for them. Mm. Hey, there's nothing yeah. you could prove. Because right. kids aren't perfect, are they? No. 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 You know, but there's something. There's just some connection to your children, right? Divine. Well, if you can have that connection to your children, there's a Heavenly Father that can have that same connection to you. And He wants to have that connection. Because He believes in you, whether or not you believe in Him. That's not yeah. important to Him. Yeah. So... You know, that's love's for everybody. I mean, if you're going through pain, you know, bottom line is get, be there. You got to be there for someone and let somebody be there for you. That's the second yes. part, too. Communication is transmission mm-hmm. and reception, right? Right. Yeah, yeah both sides. Yeah. And that's what you did for me. You know, oh. you are. No, that's you know, what God did mentors. for you. That's what God yes. did. And I was just happy to be there, you know, because look, if you're, I mean, one of the things that I thought was just adorable, she's how much love she had for Miguel. She's just crying. She's just sitting there, just just crying, so not knowing what to do. And I said, you "Why know, are you laughing?" Because I can see it. I could see you crying. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when I told her. That's I said what, she would tell me about these appointments and that it happens with her, and I'm like, "This is kind of weird." Like how how do you meet somebody and then you're just crying like both of you are crying we were <laughs> we've cried together again God yeah yes so I I'm gonna go back to the same answer you're gonna ask me yeah. 90 questions Miguel I'm gonna say God <laughs> but you know because we didn't know each other you know yeah. we're from different cultural backgrounds right I mean totally yeah. different oh, oh you know and which by the way this is this is what we were originally gonna talk about yeah separatism. Yes. See, mm-hmm. there's a disease going on in our country and in the world. It's called separatism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's deliberately being perpetrated by the wealthy. I'm talking the very wealthy. Yeah. They don't want us all unified. They don't want us all loving. They don't want us all together. They don't want unification. It's yeah. a threat to them. Yeah. They want to keep us separated. That's the bottom line. And you need to believe that. Yeah. We're, we're, not a, we're not a group of races, right? I'm not a race. I'm a human being. Yeah. Right? And... Look at how we connected. How, yeah. how much did we really even give a crap where we came from right. or what our culture was? The best thing about culture, you know the truth, is what people can learn from each other. Yeah. What we can be shared. We were talking about that when yeah. we, like going on trips, like you feel the culture when we yes. went to Mexico, when we went to Italy mm-hmm. and Spain. It's like, it's a beautiful thing. And you, mm-hmm. and you kind of, like, it, you we're not, be a part we're not of Italian, it. but you like the, the feeling of the culture that they have there. Like they have something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? Feels yes. like home a little bit, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so you're not a Democrat. You're not a Republican. You're not a Christian. You're not a Jew. You're, I'm being honest with you. You're none of these things. You're just one of God's children. And we're all God's children. And we're all meant to love each other. We need to yes. find ways where we're more alike than yeah. the ways we're more different. Right. Yeah. And start focusing on what's good about us. And in the areas that maybe we ain't see an eye to eye, we got to believe in compromise. What happened to compromise? I mean, right. look at our political system right now. We got a bunch of goofballs, if you ask me. It, we've had that for the last 50 years, in my estimations. But you got a bunch of goofballs. All they do is argue and act like a bunch of 15, 16 year olds from high school. Yeah. Does it not sound yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> when these are people we elected to go up there, come up with a solution. Come up with a compromise. Who gives a shit about who gets credit for it? Yeah. Be honest with you. I'll give you the credit. You know where it goes? God. There's the answer again. God gave you some answers so you goofballs could get together and finally get something figured out. That's the truth. Stop being Republican and Democrat. Being a public servant. Yes. Be a servant. What was Jesus? Servant. A servant. Yeah. You're crazy, right? Listen, there is power in service. You don't believe me? You ever gone, done something at a charity? Yep. Yeah. Helped some kids? How'd you feel afterwards? Oh, you feel great. Felt like a king. Yeah. You felt like a king, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's the power the, of service. That goes back to that quote that we had yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, last week from uh, Abraham Lincoln with the power. We were talking about that last night, too, at the, the party that we had here. I think I was talking to Teresa, uh-huh. but it was that uh, nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give, give them power. Mm. Ooh, no you kidding. Know, so that yeah. that really, yeah, I've seen that before. Well, let me tell you the sin you're speaking to, because this is where it really goes. And I can simplify this. Everybody asks me, Paul, how'd you get to where you are? 
Well, I was really lost. That's how I got to where I was. I was really <laughs> bad off. You have no idea. I was depressed in my bed and contemplating suicide, to be honest with you. Mm. There was a time in my life. It was really dark. And I prayed for the first time probably in 20 years because I was angry at God for taking my mom. Angry at God. Angry. I'm like, I don't need you. I make my own decisions. Go bother somebody else. Yeah. That was my attitude. Terrible attitude. But it's this, this is a true story. And I'm laying in bed. And I'm, I don't want to get up. I mean, I'm so, I've am so. i never felt like this in my life. You know, I'm like, woof, I don't know what I'm going to do. Finally, I said, you know, God, I forgot how to pray. But if you will explain things to me as if I'm three years old, I'll follow you. I'll listen. And I can't explain this guy. This is a true story. I got out of my bed. I got this energy like I'd never felt. I went into the living room. I turned on a television. That was the only thing I knew to do. I was just going through motions like a zombie. I turned on television on, and the very start of a movie came on. You know what that movie was? What? The movie Seven. Oh, you know, yeah. You know what the movie Seven's about? Yeah, the Seven Sins. Do you ever notice how dark that movie is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, that God immediately told me, he said, Paul, this is your life. This is how you're living. And everybody lost is living the same. Yeah. It's full of lust. It's full of pride. Mm-hmm. It's full of gluttony. It's full of envy. It's full of wrath. Here's a crazy one for you, wrath. We're all taught to get revenge on somebody, right? When somebody does us wrong. Right. How about this one? How about you love on somebody and give them forgiveness? Yes. You want to see true power happen in your life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love your enemies. Yep. You don't believe me? Just see what happens. You ain't concerned about that one person getting over on you. Don't let your mind trick you and think that, oh, yeah, the, well, that would be me, me being weak and that person got over on me. No, not at all. That person's a speck. It's an ant in your life at that moment. Right. You let that person go. You give them forgiveness. You give them love, yes. something they don't deserve. And you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to get blessings come from all sides, stuff that you ain't never even imagined is going to happen in your life. Yeah. Do you see how much we're alive? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, I just, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm being for real here with, with this subject. So you that saying is powerful, Miguel, but that can sum that up in one word. It's pride. Yeah. And you know, yes. men, us men have a lot more problems with pride than women do. But it's pride that starts the wars that we have. It's pride that causes a lot of trouble. So my answer to my prayer was, Okay, now go get a a thesaurus and look up all the synonyms. Find all the seven words that are the opposite of these seven sins. And that's where you'll find me. And if each day you take those seven words and every person you meet, you impose them in their life. Mm -hmm. You give them. What's the opposite of lust? Love. Yeah. You inject love in everybody you meet. You just be loving Mm -hmm. on people. What's the opposite of pride? Humility. So you know. Yeah. So see, you know, you weren't as lost as you did. He's, he's, he's not, not at all. No, you're, you're on. Because no. you know how many people no. know that? Not, not, not a lot. Yeah. You ask them these simple questions. So you're absolutely right, Miguel. It's humility. Yeah. Knowing that you don't even control being here. We could, I could die of a heart attack right now, right here in this chair. Please don't. I know. But, <laughs> but you understand where I'm going yeah. with this. Yeah. Why do we think we're in control? You want your yeah. life to be good? Let go. No. Just let it go. No. You, you, you don't decide what your next moment really is. You just don't. You don't know that you're going to be here. Let go of everything. Right. I call it, we're all tenants in our lives. And we are. Yeah. To love your enemies is harder. Ugh. You know, it, it, it's, it's difficult to love those that have caused you harm or hurt, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. But you know what's true? Everybody's hurting. Everybody has pain. Do you believe that one person is really better than another person? That sounds kind of elitist, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just that one person is going through a lot. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of weird. I, I have conservative friends. See all these categories? Yeah. And they go, Paul, you know, that you can't say that. You, that's not what conservatives say. I'm like, I told you before, I'm not a conservative. Yeah. And I'm not a liberal. No. I'm going to say things that's You're... based in love, man. It's right. about love. Yeah. It, it's about doing what's right. What? Where would I be, Miguel, if Nicole never took a chance on me? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Exactly right. So, what? I have to hate on somebody because they mis- mis- did me wrong or they stole money from me or whatever they did. You know, they're in pain. Best thing I can do is forgive them and show them love. Pray for them. Right. Now, th- there's a difference in abuse. Right. 
Yeah. So you don't ever put yourself in a situation where you allow yourself to be abused. You do have to separate yourself from an abusive situation. So people ask me, well, how do you know that? You know that. <laughs> okay. One time is an offense. Second time. The key word you're looking for here is intent. If you really feel in your heart that that person is intending you hurt, yeah. intending pain, you got to remove yourself. Pray for him. Right. Forgive him. Pray for him. But be distant. from a distance. Yeah. From a distance. Yeah. Excuse me. You have to have that. So, um, yeah. Very cool. I, I see it. What? I can see how you guys get along. <laughs> <laughs> our lunch, like, our, I mean, there's just not enough time for us. I mean, the last we went to lunch last week. Mm. Yeah. You know, where we were hanging out and. Yeah, the time, time goes by, goes by so fast. Yeah. And we talk about everything from yeah. relationship to yeah. spirituality. And here's what's you know? cool about friendship. See, and that's another thing too. You know, men and women can be friends without hanky-panky going on. That's another big, big misnomer in the world. If two people are in a place in their lives where they're comfortable, they have love, friendship can flourish. And here's the beautiful part about friendship with someone who's opposite sex. Uh, I can talk with Sonia, get a lot of good information and feedback I'm, by what she does that helps me with my wife. It helps me be a better husband with my wife. That's how we both end up crying when we're having yeah. conversations. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, I'm, I mean, I, listen, I ain't got all, but I don't have the answers. The answers are God's answers, by the way. But most of the time when Paul's off track, that's when I'm like, I'm not a very good husband. And I'll sit down, I'll be talking with Sonia and then she'll say something. I'll be like, oh, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Darn, I was right in front of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and likewise, right? That's yeah, what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like, I remember one time you told me, you're like, I know that you feel that, you know, like you're helping, you know, that you're mentoring me, but you tell me you're mentoring me as much mm. as I'm mentoring you. That's the power. It goes back to humility, but then also go back to God, because here's the thing about God. He's not linear. It's not one way. He yeah. doesn't know how to be. He's very circular. Everything is constantly going on in different levels, different dimensions. Just when you think you're the answer for somebody else, two or three people are giving you the answer. Right. Or one person is giving you yeah. the answer. And you end up going away from that going, wow, this whole time. That's how it is. You know? that, that reminds me of like in, uh, in Legal Shield when they're teaching you how to do stuff. You know, they say that you learn by three different ways. You, know, you learn by when something's taught to you. Then you you learn a, a different way when you're teaching or when you're doing it, and then, then when you're teaching somebody else, you learn a different way. Kind of like jujitsu, it happens to me mm-hmm. with yeah. the kids because I'm so new. When I get to help the kids out, there's times that I'm paying attention to the coach or we're doing the move, and then I have to show them, and then I start learning the move even better while I'm teaching the kids how to do it. Right. You know. Yeah. 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 That's good stuff. That's really good. I hadn't heard that part. But it definitely, I'm a big believer in experience. It goes back to doing it again. So education's the same way. So I'll come back and give you, you, you want to know besides God, if you need the actual linear word that is the solution to all of our problems, all of our problems, I know what that word is. But I want to save it for another time. <laughs> Are you kidding Next me? Time. How about I'm that sitting one? here like with my mouth open, I'm like, Oh, it's, it, and it's, you know, it's something, hey, we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. Yeah. But this is the problem. The way we've been doing it for so long isn't the true definition of the word. Because mm. what's been going on with what should be happening is basically slavery. Mm. I know where you're going with this. We're in a society of slippery slavery, I call it. Because, again... There are people out there trying to manipulate you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and listen, so this is the one area I'm going to put a shout out for our current president. I'm just going to do it. And I'll tell you why. I am a big believer in change isn't something you talk about. It's not a clever slogan. It's, it's something do. that's done. Now. Yes. And yeah. to have a successful businessman in the White House, I don't care if it looks like Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. I don't care if he speaks like the most egregious person ever. And don't get me wrong, a lot of the things he says, I don't agree with. <laughs> he needs to be, he needs to censor himself a little bit. <laughs> he needs to use a little humility and not be attacking other people. People are attacking him. That's what's happening. Instead of being humble, he's using pride and he's attacking back. 
Yeah. Well, guess what? Both of these parties arguing like that and behaving poorly is what's causing these young men that are not right yeah. to, to do these hate crimes. This stuff's got to stop people. But let's not talk about gun control. That's the end of the equation. That's near the solution. Talk to any good mathematician. They'll tell you. You don't solve a problem at the end of it. You solve it at the root. Yeah. You go to the root of the problem. Well, the root of the problem is that same word. Which it, you're not giving us. Not right now. Maybe I'll, you're going to have to come two. back, right? Do you want yes. me to do it yeah. now? <laughs> Part two. Okay. Part two. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's true. And, and one thing with the... Uh, like, there's a lot of people that they, they're on one team or the other team, and they, can't, they just can't say anything good yes. about... Right. Uh, you know what? You know where you can see it big time is when they have... Uh, when they're addressing in, I don't know, in the Senate hall or whatever, but you'll see that it'll be a Republican or a Democrat, and they say something, and half of the room is standing, and the other half of the room is just sitting there like this. Don't that remind you of something, you know, It's like... And they would say something that would make sense, you know, like we want to give thanks to all the veterans or something. But it's just because this guy from this team said it, mm-hmm. the other guys don't care. And they just mm. cross their arms and sit down. Pretty pretty kindergarten, right? Mm. Yeah. Pretty childish. Yeah, that's what we're like. But guess what? Here's the power, guys. So I want to bring you kind of full circle here. So one of the reasons I'm here today is to give props to these two amazing people in this amazing show. They've they've done a great job, and I hope you all will become subscribers for these folks. Um, but I'm going to launch a show of my own, um, and this is what it's about. Um, it's mm-hmm. We the People Network. Okay. Uh, we Networks for short, and the show's going to be called The Interview. And this is That's the concept, it. right? Why do we use an outdated popularity contest to vote for the most powerful position in the world. Think about this for a second. We use a popularity contest to vote for the most popular person to lead the most powerful world. Come on, people. We can do better than that. Mm, Let me tell you something. If you want to lead any great company, what do you got to do? You got to put in the work. And let me tell you, if you get hired into a position, how does that happen? Mm. You go through a rigorous interview with background checks. Yeah. So the interview is going to be an online program, a talk show format. We're going to bring in our public servants that want to run. There's going to be three segments, past, present, future. They're going to show their record what they've done in the past for everyone to see. They're going to talk about the mistakes they made and how yeah. they would have done it differently. They're going to talk about what they're currently doing and why they think that qualifies them to be a candidate for our future. And in that future... No more generalism. You're yeah. not going to say words like uh, immigration. I'm going to fix immigration. <laughs> yeah. And you ever notice the crickets after? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard that one before. Like 40, right. 50 years of broken bullshit promises, right? Right. Yeah. No, you're going to illustrate on a board. You're going to show people some specifics in your plan. You want to be elected? You should be very secure. If you're the first one on the show to have the great plan, you've got it filmed, right? You've got it protected. And now people can go to the polls and vote for people, be fully educated, and know who it is they're voting for. There needs to be an interview process. This debate process, by the way, is a joke, an absolute joke, all about drama. You ever notice you watch these debates? They're over. You're more confused than when you started. Yeah. It's like watching a reality show. It's ridiculous. (laughs) You don't get any answers. I, I I never really got into politics until actually it was when Obama ran against Mitt Romney. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to start learning a little bit more and kind of getting more involved in what's going on. And that's when that's when I got pretty discouraged when I started learning about it because all you heard was Obama and Mitt Romney. And then when you start doing some research, you find out that there's all these other candidates that you have. They're running for president too, but. 95% of the people in America probably don't even know that there's other candidates that are running. Yes. And they don't get to be on the big stage with these other guys. That's right. And that's not fair Miguel, to the people. I love it. I love it where you're going. And so can I piggyback on your yeah, point? Because yeah. part of the interview is going to be that too. It's We don't need two parties, by the way. Yeah. it's If you want to be a leader in this country, you can't speak for yourself. You don't have your own ideas. You need to rely on a group of people and tell you what to think and what to do. Well, then you ain't qualified to lead. 
And that explains why we've had 40, 50 years of failed presidencies and governorships. It's a good old boys club. It's all it's ever been for the wealthiest people. We don't have representation. Only the wealthy do. Yeah. Mm. So we need to change that because we can change that because we still outnumber them by a right. tremendous amount. Oh, yes. yes. So we need to be doing that. Yes. There's something that I saw on the news last week, and I don't know if you've heard of Joe Rogan. He's mm-hmm. a, the UFC commentator. He has one of the biggest podcasts in the world. But he's, got, he's had a lot of uh, political people on his show. And it, it's great because his podcast is maybe two and a half hours. So he gets to really sit down and get to know these people for two and a half hours. Um, but on the news, it came out that there's a petition to have him host the 2020 debate. And it's got like, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of signatures. Because mm-hmm. like, he's had Bernie Sanders on there for an hour and a half. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, th- he's had a whole bunch of different political candidates. And he's somebody that a lot of people know. Like, if if there's a question that a lot of people are thinking, he won't shy away from it. He'll ask them the hard questions. Mm-hmm. You know? So, that, that'd be pretty interesting to see mm-hmm. if that to could happen. If, yeah. yeah. So, one of the... So, the format on the show for questions, all the questions for the interview are going to come in from the listeners. Yeah. So, the that's people cool. are actually going to send in the questions. They're not mm-hmm. going to be pre-canned and rehearsed like all right. the garbage you get. It's actually going to be live. It's going to come That'll through. Be it's cool. going to be fed. We're going to have a panel to obviously, we got to vet them. We got to screen them. And then they're going to be asked. And you That's know, a great idea. They're, they're, going to have, they're going to have their moment in their past portion of the segment to share what they've done and speak about what they want to do. But I, we want to see how they react real. Yeah. yeah. We want to see how quick they are on their feet right. when they don't have 20 people telling them what to say. Right. And that's another reason I like the current president. Listen, nobody tells him anything. He just does it, you know, and he knows how to run a business. He's running a great country. And truthfully, one of the people I want to have my show is President Trump. I'd love to have him. I'll tell you why. Because one of the favorite questions I want to ask him is, okay, President Trump, knowing that you could only do four more years, I'm going to ask you the question no one's asked you. Who do you think would make a good president? Mm. Who do you think coming up? Because what I want to hear, who's the next business woman, businessman? You yeah. know, hey, how about uh, a nice African American successful businesswoman, right? That has all these accolades and accomplishments and things she's done. Why can't she be the next president? That's what we want. I don't want politicians doing this stuff no more. All they do is lie and manipulate people. That's all they're really doing. What we want is leaders and leaders that have actually done something, who actually have run a business. Maybe yeah. maybe it's some teacher who's just been an excellent career teacher and just really does a fine job. What's wrong with having a teacher as the president of the United States? Yeah. Right? So to your point, Miguel, that's what hopefully the show would do, open that up. Nice. Everybody. Yeah. That would that's be good. good idea. I think that's uh that's important, like to have the long form conversations with these people because usually you only get to hear they ask them a question and they have 20 seconds to answer and then the other person has you know a minute to think of something and 20 seconds to answer mm-hmm. and you don't really get to know people right that way that's exactly you right can't, yeah. and when you have a podcast or something like this like you can't hide for yeah. an hour and a half you know <laughs> there was like no rehearsal <laughs> you, you, right you, you there know was what, nothing <laughs> you know it's funny you know what it's a lot like it's like dating Right? Yeah. You ever date somebody like a blind date or first couple dates and you don't really know the real person. You only know what they want you to know. know. (laughs) Right? We're going to peel back the layers of the onion. We're going to expose it a little more. Yeah. So you can get to know these candidates intimately. Yeah. So, and if they don't want to show up, they're lost. We'll get some that will. And guess what? Chances are you're going to find your next president. You're going to find a good leader on our program. Yeah. Because we're going to do this. And That's cool. we need, we're going to do it with your help, America. You so to get you go. And you guys yeah, are too. You go. Come on, go. y'all. Yeah. Opposites attract. I need my endorsement. <laughs> yeah. So when are, you, uh, when are you thinking about starting the show? So we've actually already put the original formatting together okay. for it. I uh, did a spot on the Fly Mackey show Friday. Uh, he's a Bitcoin expert. Mm. Okay. Uh, so... Um, yeah, that's we're we're pretty much getting ready to go right now. It's um, finishing up a few things. Matter of fact, I probably need my friend Miguel to help me out a little bit. Yeah, and and I, that's another thing too. I believe in. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to ask formally on the air. I want you two to be a part of it. All right. Oh, I do. Thank you. Because you know what? 
I, I think I just saw, I just feel it. It's one of those things again, yeah. right? I have the people I need right here. Why go look outside, right? Right. Yeah. So I say, let's do it, and uh, so we'll be talking. Sure. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Miguel is going to make a few videos. Yeah. So we we've others. talked about it before. So I, I've kind of started writing the outline to how to start a podcast. So it's going to be four different videos. The first one's going to go over all the hardware that you have to buy, the software that you have to download. And then the second video is going to be how to record the audio and the video. And then the third one's going to be editing. And then the fourth one is going to be publishing, like how to publish everything. Wow. Right. So yeah, we were talking about this before we started the show and I almost forgot how much it took to start this thing. Because I, I go through publishing and I just type out a couple things and then I'm like, hold on a second. I had to register with this place and that place. Like I forgot. You know, it's one of those things that like when you start a, I, I've heard it before, like if you if you were to tell a business owner from in the very beginning, everything that it would take to start a business, uh, most people just wouldn't do it. Right. They're like, you know what? That's too much. But when you start, you just kind of start and then you're like, okay, well, here's the next thing I got to do and the next thing I got to do and the next thing. And then by the time you're done, you're like, holy crap, I, I couldn't imagine yeah. doing all that stuff to get this mm -hmm. thing going. But yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no doubt. So that'll be cool. Yeah, most definitely. So, yeah, definitely check out Miguel's videos when he gets these ready because this yeah. young man's done an amazing job. If you saw this setup, he's done an amazing job. And he started and learned it from scratch. Yes. And I do it on a budget. So I do yeah. all the, I mean, I try to, I get the best quality for <laughs> oh. what I can. And, and can you tell with. he's got a passion for it? And yeah. that's the most he important loves, thing. He's got yes. a passion for it. Yeah. That's how you're good at something. You got to have passion, period. That's right. You know. That's right. Have a, have to have that inner drive. Yeah. You know? So how long have you had your business? Uh, you, man, you're like reading my mind. I was just thinking this. <laughs> um, bringing it full circle. I love this guy. So I've been doing what I do for 22 years. Okay. I've been advising people on money. Uh, one thing I'm blessed with is um, that. I mean, God's given me a blessing for financials. I can teach anybody how to become wealthy. I can teach anyone how to preserve their wealth the right way. Um, Ooh, that's it, another segment. It's a, it's from a, it's from a fiduciary standpoint, and it needs to be. Uh, I'm gonna break down all the secrets out there when you're in the world and you're buying things, all the fluff that you don't need. Um, and so we're gonna expose a few people. I'm gonna make a few people unhappy, I'm sure, but I don't like greedy people. I just don't. There's, yeah. there's enough for everyone. So if you're hurting financially, um, if you don't know some things financially. Um, through the world of insurance and annuities. Uh, it's helped me become who I am. I've helped a lot of clients for 22 years. Um, people ask me, why American Family? Look, when you have the best, you don't need the rest. Mm. That's, that's really <laughs> it. I mean, that's, I'm not brainwashed. I spent six months, 22 years ago, investigating every insurance company, all the facts, the ins, the outs. And then I finally found this company that had the same philosophy I did, mm. which is put people first yeah put, not just the business saying it not a slogan but do it in action and then i thought this is a company i can work for wow. so yeah 22 yeah. years we've been protecting families and businesses uh doesn't matter what size your business no matter what size your family think about this for a minute a lot of people think about insurance is is just stuff it's not it's about time because how long did you pay your mortgage to get to your home to to be where you are 20 years now yeah. the house burns down house could be rebuilt if you got insurance right right yeah but if you don't mm -hmm. you you lost the house true but you lost 20 years yeah mm -hmm. you're starting over how many people want to start over at 50 55 right. 60 yeah so you want quality insurance you don't want it cheap don't let Warren Buffett's little lizard company on television lie to you because they're lying to you. So, you know, <laughs> just get a good advisor. Get somebody you can trust who actually will work for you in relations to the company. That's what it takes to be a good advisor. Someone's going to put you first. Yeah. So we, We've talked about personal finances and stuff mm. on the podcast before. And that's, well, when it comes to a marriage, sometimes that can be a big problem if people don't see things eye to eye. But what would you say is like, one of the biggest mistakes people make with their money. They drive around in their net worth. Mm. Yes. We've talked about that before. Oh, why, yeah. why, are you, why are you doing it in America? Why are you doing it? Right. Why are you driving a car really you can't afford? And it's, it's I mean, the value is dropping like a rock. Right. I mean, it's 
get right out of it. Drive a little economical car. You know what I drive? <laughs> What's that? I drive a Kia Nero. You ever heard of that? I think I've seen them. I don't, I'm not sure. I can't picture it, though. It's a little uh, hybrid car. You know what gas mileage is? What's that? Right, 52 miles to the gallon. Yeah. Wow. You know why? <laughs> I'm doing two things. Oil companies got enough money. They don't need all the money. Yeah. And I'm trying to help the, the, the world, the earth. You know, I do mm. believe in you, you can leave the world a better place. Right. Yeah. And not polluting it. Right. So, yeah, that's, yeah that's no, we, we've talked about that a bunch of yeah. times. Like the cars, it's just insane how much people drop on a car. Yeah. Like it makes my, it, it's getting to the point, like it makes my stomach turn when I hear somebody at work, mm. like, oh, I just got a new car and they're so excited. I'm like, what did you do? Yeah. What did you do? Yep. And like I tell Sonia, I was like, I, I love cars. But you wouldn't be able to tell by the cars that I drive because I just I can't see it until until you have the kind of money that it doesn't matter. Then okay, go ahead and buy, you know, one of these sports cars, whatever. Yeah, I love them. But let me give you I just a good can't solution. Justify it. Do you want me to give you a good solution? What's that? Go rent that car. There you go. Yeah. Go spend one day in it. Have the day of your life because that's guess what? It's somebody else's problem when you give it back yeah, to them, right? Yeah, true. You don't have the maintenance, you don't have all the insurance, you don't have all the expense of it, right? Yeah. Go rent that fancy sport car convertible from Enterprise or Hertz or whoever, mm. right? Yeah. For one day and then go back and get in your Kia. Yeah. Pick me and up. Keep take the me money out in on... your pocket. So people ask me, so Paul, so when can I, you know, I just have a love affair with cars. I really want to get something really nice. When can I do it? This is when you can do it. When you could take a pile of about a hundred grand, put it in the middle of a table, put some lighter fluid on it, and literally light it and not even think twice about it. Mm-hmm. If you can do that, That's a good one. then you should buy a hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah. If you can't, which is most people, why are you doing it? Right. Yeah. Why are you doing that? I teach people l- let me show you what you can do with that hundred thousand in the world of real estate, annuities. There's so many vehicles out there that you can get your money working for you, not against you. Right. And when you buy a car cash, there's a lot of, um, like, there's, you have so much power when you have cash in your hand. Like, you can get the price, you can get a car for less than what it's actually worth. And then if something does happen, then you can sell the car. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, yeah, you can we've, sell it and actually, yeah. we've made money. Yeah, we've on made money. Cars. Yeah. But the only way you do that is by buying them cash. Right. You know? And so. it has to be a specific kind of car. You, you got to be a little bit more into it. Yeah. But again, it's no way to make money. The best no. way to make money is in things that are appreciated. Yes. Yeah. Invest in education. Invest in yourself. Invest in real estate. Invest in things that grow. Yeah. Okay? That's what you want to do. Um, the biggest thing you can invest in is really yourself. It truly is. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So for anybody that's listening, that, or and for us, like let's say you have somebody that has like an extra $10,000 in the bank that isn't doing anything. What would you do with that money? What would you suggest for those people? So the first things I listen for is keywords. And you said, isn't doing anything. Yeah. Let's bring that out because that's the important part. So let's, let's put a value on it. Let's say 0%. Why do you have $10,000 sitting in a bank account so the bank can make money on it and yeah. they, they're not paying you anything? That's mm-hmm. the first mistake. Yeah. So people say, well... Well, how am I going to access some if it's liquid? Well, you need to look into a little thing called a money market. Look into a money market account. Look into online savings banks. Look okay. into CDs. There's a lot of things you can park $10,000 in and get access to. Okay? So don't let it sit in a 0% interest bank account. That's a waste of money. Right? Mm. Get the money to work. That's the most important thing. Now, you could take that $10,000, even put it down on a house maybe or a condo. Start small. Stay within your means and grow. So I can show you several things to do with that $10,000, but definitely don't let it sit in an account getting 0%. Um, one more thing, if I may say. I don't. It's interesting. I've had some discussions with clients, and the number one adversary I, I come up against all the time. It's amazing. Well, Dave Ramsey says, listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me tell you a little bit about the history of Dave Ramsey. You may or may not know. Uh, the guy was bankrupt. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, everybody makes mistakes. You know, going bankrupt, there's nothing to be ashamed of. But that doesn't make you an expert. He runs a television program. He runs a radio show. He's making money from advertisers. The advertisers he endorses 
Why is he telling you to buy like term life insurance? Because a term life company pays him to. Mm. Come on, yeah. you, you got to start looking for people with your best interest. The one area I do agree with Dave, I give him props on this. I'm so glad he brought this to the forefront because our grandmother and our grandfathers have been trying to do this forever. And that's, you got to get rid of the debt. Yeah. that yeah. Stop borrowing money, especially borrowing money and stuff you don't need to borrow money on, right? right. Furniture on a credit card? Come on. Rims, right. Co- rims, <laughs> rims, cars, <laughs> car loans. You're getting that's, a seven, eight year car loan. Best financial investments. Go put, go put a, some rims on yeah. a credit card. Right. right. I mean, it's it's really crazy. Yeah. So he, he does show people that. But you know what? Our, our moms and dads, our grandma and grandpa, sold us that a long time ago. Right. Don't yeah. spend money you don't got. That's yeah. the right. bottom line. And if you had, it's pretty simple to get out of it. You just got to prioritize those things. Yeah. And, and you need a qualified advisor. And I'd, I would be happy to help you. If you have a problem, you can reach out to me. I'll help you anytime. Awesome. Very cool. Awesome. Very well, cool. That's, it's been an hour. Wow. Yeah. So Let before, me tell you something, guys. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to say this. And I don't, I don't, I'm not a big believer in complimenting people a lot because our heads <laughs> get like, I don't want to get their egos, right? But these two people are amazing anchors. They have an amazing show. Because I've sat here for an hour and it's felt like 15 minutes. It, and they ask incredible questions. Um, this is this is for real. So I hope you're tuning in because I got a feeling these two young people are going places. And because they're great anchors, they can tell they care about people. And that's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. As long as you care about people, blessings are going to come. Yes. It's when you start getting selfish or you start forgetting. You know, me and you talked about this. Yep. She said to me, I want to be the next Oprah Winfrey. I'm like, why the hell you want to be that? <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to be Oprah Winfrey. You know, I'm sure Oprah started out great, but you know, now I don't know. Oprah's not the same Oprah. But that's what money kind of does sometimes. You get too yeah. much money, your head gets too big. Next thing you know, you think you're God, and that's a problem. Yeah. Okay, so be humble in all that you do. Be who you are. Keep doing what you're doing for people, and nobody can outgive God. Right. If he decides you're going to the top. You're going to make Oprah Winfrey look like a pair of flip-flops when it's all said and done. Okay? <laughs> so that's the real. That yeah. is the real. Thanks. So thank you for being with us. Thank uh, you, is there any, where can people find you? Uh, any plugs? Uh, plug yeah. for your business? So like I said, I'm an uh, American family agent here in Mesa Gilbert, um, but I work all over the country. Um, if you need help, uh, give me a call. My office number is 480-632-0909. Or you can email me at uh, pgebhard at amfam.com that's a-m-f-a-m.com like American Family yes awesome it was so great having you man yeah. you guys this is awesome and you're a natural no yeah. he's Thanks. a natural yeah. no yeah. but Isn't he? see that you guys are good <laughs> anchors bring that out and guess you guys did an amazing Ooh. job Miguel <laughs> you, your questions I mean just like I'm like we wow, appreciate this. it yeah <laughs> thank you he's really good I, I gotta be real I was nervous he loves I was really nervous when I got on your show thinking, I don't know what I'm going to say. What if I start talking about my shoes or something stupid, right? But you guys did a great job. So thank you for having me and thank you you. for having such considerate questions. Thank Thank you. you. Appreciate you. Thank you guys. You got anything before we get out of here, Ben? No. That's it? No, I think, yes. All right. So thank you guys for being with us. We appreciate you guys listening. Uh, Yeah, go check out uh, Paul and you can send them an email or give them a call if you guys have any questions. You can check us out at oppositesattractpod.com and you can support the show there. And uh, you can also check out trustinkusa.com. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for your support. We appreciate you guys. We love you. We'll see you next week. Thank you for being here. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.